Welcome back. All right, so one topic of conversation I've seen a lot, and so I'm going to talk about it here, is the fact that the Tampa Bay Lightning are as high up in my power rankings as they are. Their current record is 29-1. and one. Their last 10 games, they're 8-2, and two, and they've won five in a row. Tampa just doesn't lose. Uh, they're 12-4-1 and one at home, so they're excellent at home, and on the road, they're pretty good, 8-5. and five. Uh, Their goal differential, they're scoring 24 more goals than they're allowing. So, in putting this video together, I thought, well, I can talk about their winning streak, or I can talk about their most recent 21 games. So, we'll go through this, and, I mean, are there losses? Over 21 games, there will be, but uh, there really isn't anything egregious here. So, we'll start with, and this goes back to November 1st, where they won against the Ottawa Senators. Now, if it's in blue, it's a home game. If it's in black, it's a road game. So, there you go. If any of these are the wrong color, I do occasionally make a mistake. So, in blue, so home game, uh, they won 4-3 to three against the Ottawa Senators. They rallied from 3-2 down in the third. Tampa Bay is very dangerous when they're behind. Uh, they, they lost 4-3 to three against Carolina in their next game. That was a shootout. They led 3-2 to two after 2. Carolina, of course, ties it. There's no score in overtime. And then in the shootout, that goes to Carolina. Uh, then they won 5-3 to three against Buffalo. This, again, being a home game. They trailed 3-2 to two in the third and then rallied. So this is where I, I wasn't that convinced that, that Tampa wasn't still dealing with some kind of cup hangover or something along those lines. The New York Rangers uh, coach, Gerard Gallant, recently coming out and saying, yeah, you know, the, the hangover is, is probably what was causing the Rangers problems at points, too. So... Then they lost against Edmonton, uh, three to two, and they were down three to one after two. So this, to me, is kind of the bottom. Although they go out on the road, they lose five to one. They trailed three nothing after two, and that's at Washington. So at this point, they're seven six and one. They won seven out of fourteen, and they're just middle of the pack, right? And I think at that point, I had them eleventh on the power rankings, maybe twelfth. Uh, but it, at any rate, Tampa Bay didn't look like Tampa Bay. And then that switch, right? The, the good teams can find that switch. And I think Tampa Bay found it. First, they go home and in the second half of a back-to-back -back against the Capitals, this one they win 6-3 to three, and they led that one 4 nothing after one. So that's the kind of fight back I like to see. Team loses a game like that, they come back in the next one and they roar out and there's no discussion of who could or should have won that one. You know who won that one was the right one. Then they went against Dallas. That's a Kalorn overtime winner to make it a 5-4 score at 343 of overtime. So they beat Dallas. And then they beat Calgary 4-1. They led that one 2-0 after 2. And they, they cruised to that 4-1 win. Uh, then they go to Nashville. They won 3-2. That was an overtime winner for Steven Stamkos at 236. Stamkos almost at 500 goals. He's getting close. Uh, then they come back home, and against Boston, they lost 5-3. to three. They were down 4-1 to one after 2. Now, Boston is the one team that was above them in the power rankings this past Saturday. Uh, spoiler alert, still ahead of Tampa as we're speaking. But, yeah, so losing against Boston isn't really... I think we can agree that's not a big deal. Well, since they were 7-6-1, and one, they've lost three games, and two of them were against Boston. So, there's that. Uh, against St. Louis, they win 5-2. to two. They led that one 3-1 to one after 2. There wasn't much doubt. Then they go out on the road. They go to Buffalo, and they win 6-5. to five. Stamkos with an overtime winner there at 244. So Stamkos, two overtime winners. Likes the dramatics. They like to score on the power play in overtime as well. Uh, then they went to Boston, and they lost 3-1. to one. Everybody loses in Boston, minus two teams that have won an extra time. Uh, it was tied 1-1 one, one after 2 in Boston, and then Boston wins at 3-1. to one. So it's not like they lost by a ton. So that's not something that would have busted them down on the, the power rankings board. Uh, then they won. This is to start December. So this dividing line is the end of November. This is December. And they won 4-1 to one against the Philadelphia Flyers. They led that one 4 nothing in the third before Philadelphia got that one goal to break the shutout. Then they win 4-3 to three against Toronto. That one's at home. That's an overtime winner for Killorn at 33 seconds of overtime. So Kalorn and Stamkos are two guys you got to watch in overtime for Tampa. And if you're watching them, well, then Kucherov will probably bite you. Or Braden Point, or Hagel, or Nick Paul. There are a lot of options here. Ross Colton is considered an option. I guess Hedman, sure. Uh, Sergachev, yes. So there's, there's a lot there with the Tampa Bay Lightning. 
Uh, then they lost at home against Detroit 4-2. to two. That one was, that one they trailed 1-0 after the second, and they threw everything and the kitchen sink at Huso in the third period in that one. It is remarkable. Detroit held the lead in that game. So again, Tampa Bay, did they outplay Detroit? Yes. Uh, did they lose the game? Also, yes. But then they bounced back. They went 4-2 to two against, Na- or 5-2 to two against Nashville. That one was tied 2-2 after two. Uh, they won 4-1 to one against the Florida Panthers. That was 1-1 after the second. They win 6-2 to two against Seattle. That they led 2-1 to one after one and 5-2, to two, or 5-1 to one after two. And then they win at 6-2. to two. And against Columbus, they won 4-1. to one. That one was tied 1-1 after two. And then in Montreal on the weekend, they win they win five to one. They led four nothing after two. So since they were seven, six, and one, they're thirteen and three. They lost two against Boston. They lost a game against Detroit that if not for the heroics of Ville Husso, eh, they probably win that one. They're getting good goaltending. Their defense has been excellent. Their offense is, as I said, pretty deep. So Kucherov's your leading scorer in Tampa, because of course he is. In 30 games, 12 goals, 37 assists, 47 points. So he's on pace for a lot. Uh, so is Stamkos, 30 games, 16 goals, 20 assists for 36 points. He's above a point per game. Uh, 72 points in 60 games, so 80s. He could end up with 95 to 100 points, absolutely. Uh, Braden Point, 30 games, 16 goals, 15 assists, 31 points. Very remarkably uh, consistent. I do like that his last name's Point, and he's good for a point per game since his last name is Point in every game. And I don't know a less awkward way of saying that. Vasilevsky, 13-8-1 with a 9-15 save percentage. I think his play's gotten better after a a rough couple of starts that he had. Uh, And I think he's been excellent. And same with Brian Elliott. Elliott had a rough first game of the year, and since then he's been very good. He's 7-1 with a 9-0-2 save percentage. There really isn't a weakness to, to speak of with the Tampa Bay Lightning at this point when you look at the roster. Uh, the one thing with Tampa Bay, I, I, I do think there are people that are probably tired of him. Probably like, all right, get him out of the way. That's it. And then there's the fact, too, that in Boston, Toronto, and Tampa, you have three juggernauts in the same division, that the argument could be made that they are playing one, two, three, the best in the league, right? So uh, it really, with Tampa Bay, it will be uh, interesting to see as this month goes along and into next month, do they end up being number one on my power rankings soon? So... Uh, goals four per game, they're scoring 3.67. That's good. Their goals against per game, 2.83, which seems to be coming down uh, during this winning streak. Uh, their projected points, so this is through the Athletic. This is through the model they have on the Athletic. I do like to go through different models. And uh, they're seventh overall in the projected standings for the Athletic currently. 106.3 is where they project their points to be. I think that's conservative. But I understand, too, that this is different models, and their, their their schedule will get tougher. But you go with the schedule you're dealt, and being 13-3 and three in your last 16 is pretty darn good. Uh, their, their cup chance currently, again, with the Athletic is 5%. I, I would think the odds of the winning Stanley Cup might be higher, but we do have to remember this is a team that's gone to three straight Stanley Cup finals. They have played a lot of hockey. That is about three quarters of a season's worth of extra hockey on top of all of the regular season games. And so it wears you down. Uh, one thing after the New York Islanders lost in a Stanley Cup final in 1984 uh, that was cited for them not getting their fifth straight Stanley Cup was exhaustion. They had played an extra season worth of games. And so eventually your energy level just drops off and, and you, you can't keep doing that. And guys are banged up, right? Uh, there's going to be injuries. You're not going to have that same time off during the summer that other teams are going to have. And so you might be a little more banged up at the start of the season than other teams are. And then you have the cup hangover. And I do think that that affected Tampa early. Like I said, they won seven of their first 14. Um, if you look, and, and again with the depth, I just went with the top three scorers because we could just go through the whole roster. You have Sorelli, who since his return has looked absolutely fantastic. That's a huge bonus for a team that was already playing pretty well. Sergachev, last I saw injured, we'll see how long he's out, but there's a lot of depth on this blue line as well. Uh, Hedman, one of the best defensemen in the league. I say one of because there is an argument to be had right now. I think we're in a fantastic age for defensemen. I think there's a lot of really good defensemen in the NHL. Uh, you've got Hagel. Hagel has been absolutely remarkable, has, has Nick Paul. Uh, when they added Hagel and Paul, 
I think the eyeballs were not only on winning another Stanley Cup, but I think it was on this season. They knew they were going to lose guys like Palat, and so you needed guys who could step in and provide the offense. And so far, Hagel and Paul have done exactly that. This is a team that has shed players over the last couple of off-seasons, and they don't seem to lose anything during the regular season after. Uh, Ross Colton, excellent player, brought up through their, their minor league system, which is really remarkable in, in and of itself. Nemestikov's been good in a bottom six role. Has he scored enough? Probably not, but I mean, you haven't needed it yet if you're Tampa. Uh, Maroon, uh, solid bottom six forward. He finally got his first goal. He's been around the net enough to get that. Uh, Corey Perry, good veteran forward who can also pop in the odd goal here and there, provide some leadership. Tons of experience with Perry. Uh, Belmar, good fourth line forward. You got Chernak, one of the better top four defensemen that people don't talk about, I think, nearly as much as they should. Uh, Ian Cole has been a good fit there too. Zach Bogosian, good veteran player. And Nick Perbix uh, has been one of those guys too. As I said about Colton, they always seem to have the next guy coming up. Tampa Bay is a remarkable team in how they're built. It is a remarkable team in how they remain uh, as one of the best teams in the league despite all of the turnover, despite having to do cap gymnastics to stay under the cap. And honestly, they're in a position where they, they could very well win a third Stanley Cup in four years and become an official dynasty. And we've talked about which teams should qualify for dynasties or could, but if you win three cups in four years, that officially makes you a dynasty. And so for Tampa Bay, they're in the conversation. They are they are going to be one of the favored teams going into the playoffs. Uh, they've shown nothing this year to tell me they're not capable of doing it again. Uh, their depth, again, is fantastic. And they're going to be adding at the deadline. They're going to find a way to add at the deadline. And they're going to be, I would think, even more dangerous um, going along. Because they're run the right way. This is a team that Julian Breesbois run them the right way. Uh, and and it's it's been he's he knows that balance between loyalty, so showing loyalty to your veterans and when to cut a player loose because you just can't financially uh, justify you know certain demands and and satisfying those demands while acknowledging that the player is worth that kind of money. And I come back to Andre Palat. Palat's worth the money New Jersey's giving him. He's not playing right now due to injury, but he's an excellent forward. But for Tampa Bay, it didn't financially make sense for them to hold on to him. So, and there's a video to be done on that as well and on that balance and knowing which players to replace and which ones to keep. Because there are general managers who try to keep everybody and that gets really expensive. And then those that seem to know, all right, we're going to keep these guys and the other ones are not interchangeable. That makes it sound a little cold. But the other players are ones that we can, if we need to, we can find a replacement for that player. And so Tampa Bay's been run really well. They're playing very well. I know that their schedule might look soft to some, but to me it doesn't look that soft. You've got Carolina in here. I know they lose in a shootout, but still. Uh, you've got Dallas right here. You've got Boston twice. They lost, but still. You've got Toronto here. You've got Florida here. I understand Florida's below the playoff line, but still playing playing quite well. Seattle is above the playoff line, and they beat them 6-2. to two. And you you basically you you get the hand you're dealt, and you play it. And they've played it quite well. So let me know your thoughts in the comment section below as always. Don't forget to hit like and subscribe if you're browsing your way through you just happened upon this video. Uh, and and I, I understand too that there may be those that are just tired of Tampa Bay always being this good. But I think they're going to be this good for a while. But let me know your thoughts. Thank you guys so much for all your, your support along the way. I will talk to you again soon.